The multi-item sorter has come a long way. V1 built on Shildy Freak's design and separated the filter and collection chests. V2 improved tileability from 3 wide tileable to 2 wide tileable. V3 significantly reduced the footprint and improved the wiring overall. V4 sped things up to nearly hopper speed. V5 reduced the impact it had on lag. So what's next? A quick overview for those who are new here. This is a categorizing item sorter. This multi-item sorter, known commonly as the MISS, sorts multiple types of items into the same chest. It sorts 64 stackables and 16 stackables. Non-stackable items will pass through, though recommended you pre-sort them out beforehand. Items are sorted based on the contents of this filter chest, where you'll place two of each item you want to sort for. The remaining slots need to be blocked. Make sure to use renamed items in your filter hoppers, and please don't pass filter items through to be sorted. The system requires an item gate, which will be included in the world download, to create a 40 game tick delay between item types. If you see items piling up in chests, or items being sorted into the wrong category, check your droppers. All your droppers. Including those in the item elevator. So what are we trying to solve for? Well, there's still a few things that bother me. We've slowly kept increasing the size with newer versions. V3 got it down to 6x7x2, V4 was 8x7x2, and V5 was 8x8x2. Some in-between versions played with size a bit. V5.1 by Sergi D got it back down to 7x7x2, but how do we make it smaller? Does it even need to be smaller? If size were the only measure, then V3 would be the ultimate design. Let's talk about measures. We already mentioned size. Speed is another factor. For this type of miss, nearly hopper speed is probably as good as it gets, since the hopper needs time to flush matches. We've maintained the same speed since V4, the exception being V5.1, which is still nearly hopper speed, but takes 8 more game ticks to switch item types. Build complexity is also an important measure. The miss is meant to be simple. If you want something more complex, then go with Cartmiss V3 or any other complete storage system found on the Storage Tech Discord. They have many more features at the cost of complexity. As for the miss, V4.2 was probably the most complicated. The number of comparator subtractions and items required in containers were a common complaint. V5 set out to fix that, but it still has its issues. The rail placements have definitely caused some grief. Lag impacts must also be considered. All the V4 versions have considerably negative impact on lag. Really just from all the flashing dust. What about sound? I've always strived to make these systems silent, but there are plenty of systems out there that use a variety of noisemakers, and they're still widely used. Does sound matter? Well, a quick poll tells me yes, but there's still a large enough population of the No Sound Gang provided they knew what I was talking about, which might not be the case. Build cost might be another measure, but for a system like this, it might not be an issue. I mean, saving on a couple components is all well and good, but does the difference between 160 observers or 128 observers really matter in the grand scheme of things? Build cost might be a deterrent if the system was significantly larger, but then we'd be completely sacrificing the size measure. So I'm going to say build cost isn't that important, or it's inherently tied to size. So what if we ditched silence? That opens us up to components that were restricted in previous versions. Pistons, dispensers, trapdoors, they're all fair game. In fact, I already have a snazzy piston-based lock for the filter hopper, one that dates back to before version 4.2. We used it in our attempts to make a truly one-wide tileable miss, something we determined isn't practical. The piston lock uses a composter and two comparators. When raised, you get the off-pulse required to unlock the filter chest. 
When lowered, the top comparator becomes a cud until it's updated by the comparator below, so no off pulse on the way down. It's also very compact, but means we must still do the subtraction to this comparator on the side so it only triggers at SS2. Locking, unlocking the filter hopper was a little tricky. We can use another piston with a redstone block on it, but the timings are a little off. You need extra delay, but a repeater at 2 game ticks is too fast, while also too slow at 4 game ticks. The solution? Inspector Talon suggested buffering the signal with an observer, and that seems to have done the trick. The dropper tower remains the same. The observers here to catch the items on mismatches are also still required, but how do we trigger them? Reading from any of these components elicits multiple triggers, which isn't favorable, so we need a rising edge. And it just so happens as a component with a built-in rising edge that we couldn't use when we were restricted by sound. A dispenser here with a snow bucket does what we need. Timing is a little different, so we can't use rails here like we've done traditionally. We'll place an observer downward and a repeater on four game ticks here. Now our items will travel to this dropper, and the trigger here was our biggest challenge. Luckily, we have Command Leo on our side. Leo shared a couple designs that could work in this space. Unfortunately, the only wiring we could get to fit here requires powering upwards through a barrel which generates an additional trigger to this piston. However, it doesn't seem to impact system functionality in any way. And this is the final design. What we call Noisy Miss runs at the same speed as V4 and V5, using the exact same item gate for input. It fits into a 6x6x2 footprint, smaller than any Miss I've built before. I hesitate to call it Miss V6, though. It doesn't really introduce anything particularly new. The smaller size and build simplicity are nice, but aren't large enough gains compared to previous versions that would warrant making this the next in the series. However, it's a decent alternative to avoid the tricky rail placements of V5 while maintaining the item switching speed. Some early testing shows that it fares better on lag than the V4 series, but falls a bit short compared to V5. Like version 5.1, it's truly too wide tileable. The downside is that it's loud. The pistons are far enough away from where your chest towers are so that you don't hear them. The loud part is the dispensers. For people with sound off, maybe not a big deal. For people with sound on, maybe you don't mind? I built an alternative noisy mist that fits in a 6x7x2 footprint that does away with the dispensers, but reintroduces alternating rail types, making it too wide AB tileable again. And making it bigger might defeat the purpose of this mist though both these versions are probably the easiest to build in a while. I've set up a couple halls for you to play with, a one wide tileable snaked version here, and a two wide tileable setup here. World Download will be available in the description. Please take the time to check them out. Big thanks as usual to Inspector Talon, his input on this design and commitment to finding new solutions are of tremendous value. Special thanks to Command Leo for sharing his knowledge on ways to trigger the droppers. Thanks again, YouTube. Have a great day.